In Syria, an, uh, an opposition activist group says that 24 more people died today in five different provinces throughout the country. This YouTube video purportedly shows security forces firing demonstrators today in Erbin in Syria. We, of course, cannot independently confirm the video's authenticity. The numbers, though, are staggering. At least 5,000 dead in the past 10 months of the government crackdown on protesters, and that number may be much higher. Time and time again, the government blames the violence on armed terrorists, and time and time again, people inside Syria tell us that's just not true. Tonight, a new voice in the chorus that's telling the story, a first-hand account from a former defense official in the Syrian government who's defected. We've heard terrifying details about what is going on inside Syria before, but perhaps none as chilling as those that are now coming from this former official. Or Damon talked with him. I spoke to her just a short time ago. So our former Syrian defense official who recently defected to Egypt spoke out yesterday, and he had some really disturbing details about how the Syrian regime operates, including paying thugs $100 a day to crack down on protesters. What else did he say? Well, Mahmoud al Hajj Hamad was also talking about how from his 12th floor office in the Ministry of Defense, where he used to work as an, ex an inspector overseeing the finances of the ministry, he was seeing and hearing about how detainees were being brought in by the busload, handcuffed and blindfolded. At times, he was saying, being held in underground prisons. He was also saying that the government was basically using funds from the ministry to finance these armed gangs that were in times made up of just pro-government thugs combined with members of the intelligence services, the Air Force, other members of the armed forces to formulate these armed gangs that he was basically using as hit squads to go after the Syrian demonstrators. It was really quite a chilling and horrific image, Anderson. He, he also described seeing vans marked with the Syrian Red Crescent insignia firing at crowds of protesters. So people inside the vans actually firing at protesters. Yeah, and that is what he said was the most horrific thing that he had witnessed these vehicles that were being marked with the insignia of the Syrian Red Crescent. This is something that is meant to be medical relief. This is something that is meant to signify medical aid. And Anderson, he was saying that the Syrian government was using this as an excuse to go in amongst the protesters who would be naturally assuming that this was some sort of medical aid just to fire on them. What did, what did you have to say about Bashar al-Assad's control of the situation in Syria? Well, he believes that Bashar al-Assad has lost control over these monsters, as he was calling them, and he described the situation in Syria as being a genocide. And that's quite interesting because a number of analysts have had conflicting opinions as to whether or not Bashar al-Assad actually has control over what's taking place, whether or not he's giving direct orders. Despite the conflicting information that we're getting, there's one fact that remains fundamentally true, and that is that people are dying by the day and their cries grow more desperate. When you talk to these people, Anderson, as you and I both have, their voices, they're filled with disappointment, they're filled with despair, they're filled with anguish, and they're just looking for a solution. It's a solution that the Arab League has failed to provide them. It's a solution that the international community has failed to provide them. And, and as you mentioned, this, uh, this defector, this former uh, defense official, uh, did use the term gen genocide to describe what is happening there. Arwa, appreciate the time tonight. Thank